Hello, my dear friends. How are you doing? Hope you are having an amazing day and not having to deal with drama. Ready for new stories I have for you today? Let's go to the first one. And don't forget to listen to the end of the story, guys, to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. I, 32, have been married to my soon-to-be ex-wife, 30, Madison, for four years. We are currently in counseling, but it is not going to work. About a year ago, I found out she was having an affair by coming home to their clothes in the living room, and it sounds coming from our bedroom. I lost it. I was getting my cricket bat out of the front closet when I stopped to think about consequences. I did not want to go to jail. Instead, I took all their clothes and left quietly. I went to a friend's house, but not before throwing all the clothes in the McDonald's garbage can. I turned off my phone and got plastered with my buddy. His wife hosed us off in the morning. After I turned my phone back on, I had dozens of calls and texts from Madison. First scared because she got my updated flight information, then upset that I didn't call her to let her know I was going to be coming home early, then freaked out that the house had been broken into, then crazy because she figured out it was me. They just got more deranged. The guy she was with is five inches shorter than me and about 60 pounds lighter, so if he had taken my clothes, it would be obvious. He ended up calling his friend to go get his spare keys from his house. Unfortunately for him, his wife smelled a rat and followed his friend back to my house, where she saw him leaving in oversized clothes. Long story short, she took pictures and she had evidence of his infidelity, which caused their prenup to be canceled, which cost him a lot of money. It is all one big giant crap show. It took a couple of months, but my wife convinced me to try and forgive her. We started going to counseling and we were working our way through it until recently. In a counseling session, she said that I was wrong to steal his wallet, phone, and car keys. She said that his divorce is costing him a lot of money and that I should have dealt with it in a more mature manner and that it was my fault. I have never admitted to taking his stuff. To begin with, I was afraid he might call the cops. Then I didn't want to give her ammunition in case she wanted a divorce. Now I just don't care. I told her that her cheating was the reason her boyfriend is getting divorced and that I hope his ex takes everything. I'm still not living at home. I have my own apartment, and I'm filing for divorce. Now that I know how she feels, it's kind of a slap in the face that she is blaming me for his divorce. The audacity of OP's wife to blame OP for her affair partner's divorce. And OP is right. He isn't getting a divorce because OP took his stuff. He's getting a divorce because he was cheating and his wife found out. OP needs to divorce his wife as he deserves so much better. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Zern says, The fact that she tried to blame his divorce on you and not the fact that they had an affair says a lot about her. No thanks, 9802 says, Oh my God, I died laughing. Your wife has a lot of nerve sticking up for her affair partner and claiming that you wronged him. How about the wrong her and him committed against you and his wife? Clearly she doesn't regret her affair, just getting caught. I wish you well, and I hope all goes your way in the divorce. Not the a-hole. Sweet Serenity XX says, Not the a-hole. Cancel the rest of the marriage counseling sessions and get that divorce ASAP. Hopefully you are in an area where you can get restitution from the affair partner and infidelity is considered to be a fault in divorce. If she stuck to her marital vow, she wouldn't be in this situation and it further proves that she is in communication with the affair partner currently. I hope you're in contact with the betrayed spouse because she can potentially help you with your case by providing additional information and proof of the affair, including photos of affair partner leaving in your clothes. If you own that home and your name is on the deed, move back in and sleep in the guest room. Give her the absolute silent treatment. You do not want to make it look like you abandoned your home. Install cameras if you have to. Get that divorce and be free. What a crazy, terrible night I had. Four years ago, my wife had an affair with a co-worker. We had been married for three years at the time and were trying to have kids, but had fertility issues and both were having a hard time with that. I caught her because another co-worker reached out to me to let me know what was going on. We were incredibly close to divorce, but through counseling, we made it through and have had a pretty good marriage over the last two years. We have a date night once a week that I plan. I bring her flowers at least once a week, write love notes, etc. I don't want to lose her. She left that job so she wouldn't be around that man, went completely no contact with him. Fast forward to yesterday. 
We were at the gym and I was waiting for my wife to get done showering. I had forgotten my phone at home and grabbed hers to kill some time. I wasn't trying to snoop. It has been at least two years since I've even felt I needed to snoop. I open up Instagram and start scrolling through pictures. But then I notice that she has a message. I knew it was wrong to click. That's too far in an invasion of her privacy. But curiosity got a hold of me. It was him. The co-worker that she had an affair with. Two months ago, he reached out to see how she was doing. I read through all the messages. There was nothing wrong with what they said. It was them catching up about life and work. He's still at his old job. If it had been anyone else, I wouldn't have even cared. But this was the man that helped almost ruin my marriage. I took some screenshots and sent them to myself. Waited until we got in the car and then asked her about why she's talking to him. She starts screaming that I shouldn't have looked at her messages, saying that I don't trust her. I apologized for snooping, but told her that I want a divorce. She stopped talking to me and left the house as soon as we got home. I have no idea where she went. Even this morning, she hasn't responded to me. Waking up this morning, I still believe I want a divorce. The pain of the affair was too much. I know they aren't having an affair right now, but the fact she is even talking to him is insulting to me, especially without telling me. Am I overreacting? You don't catch up with an old affair. The important fact to remember is that her first response to his first message, I assume he initiated contact, was not, things are well, glad you're fine too, but please don't contact me again. It's also important to remember she never told OP she was in contact with him again. I'm sure she'll say she didn't want to concern OP with this piddling nothing of a matter, but it's not nothing, is it? OP needs to divorce her, and no, he is not overreacting. Danger close maybe, says. So let me get this straight. Your wife cheats on you. You two go to marriage counseling and the outcome is that you stay together, but you are bending over backwards to rekindle the intimacy in your marriage by planning date nights and sending her flowers on the regular. When you're the one that got cheated on, what has she done to make amends in the marriage? What is she doing to let you know she's faithful and wants to be with you? The absolute minimum she could have done is permanently block the affair partner on all mediums and never interact with them again. Her reaction to you finding the messages, while seemingly harmless, says it all. Those are just the ones you saw. She may have deleted some DMs or may still be screwing around on other apps. She sees stability in you, but treats you like a doormat. I hope you two never have kids after having the fertility issues, because the divorce is going to be messier. Have some respect for yourself and leave. Foreign Cow 1189 says, The let's catch up messages are a tactic to get your foot back in the door. Your wife knows that, and if she is entertaining it, then she will eventually cheat on you again. Stop with the counseling, which I'm sure was all about you working on forgiving her. Stop with the flowers and love notes. She wants a guy to treat her like crap. Shenandler Bong 01 says, You're not overreacting. She gave you a reason to not trust her. End of story. If she wanted to save the marriage, she would have blocked her affair partner on Insta when he sent the first message. She's entertaining the idea of this guy again. This is honestly all you need to know. Edit, update. My wife finally responded by text. She claims to have stayed at a hotel overnight. She says that I should go to my parents. I realize I forgot to mention we have a one-year-old boy, so I'll need some help with him as she said she can't talk to me right now. She said she understands why I want a divorce and won't fight it. She's looking for lawyers right now. I'm not sure what to feel right now. Honestly, I knew I would continue on the path to divorce, but I think part of me hoped there would be a little fight for me from her. I imagine she will probably start dating her old co-worker again. I just hope she fights for our boy during all of this. She really is a good mother to him, and he deserves to have her in his life. I married my beautiful wife Hannah almost a year ago. Now I love her more than anything, but she was a bit of a bridezilla, and everything at the wedding had to be perfect. I work in an industry where butt kissing and nepotism runs rampant, so we invited people I work with to the wedding. Chris, the owner of the firm, showed up with his wife who was wearing white, with flowers, and Hannah was fuming. She felt she did it on purpose, as she had apparently been catty in the past, and demanded I kick her out. I told her I could not kick my boss's wife out, but then I could see it was ruining her day, and her maid of honor was threatening red wine, which would have been worse. I told them as gently as I could. His wife was like, but it has flowers. But they did leave. My mom told me I was a ducking idiot and better not expect a loan from her when this blew up. Well, long story short, I didn't get the promotion I had a good chance of getting. Chris now treats me like a joke and wants nothing to do with me. 
and the rest of the firm is laughing behind my back. I am looking for another job, but it is what it is for right now. Hannah desperately wants a bigger house so we can start our family. Also, I saw her eyeing some jewelry my sister's boyfriend bought her, and it just makes me feel like crap. Well, my mom turned 50 the other day, and my stepdad showed up with a Porsche. In the car, Hannah joked I should get her one for her upcoming birthday, and I kind of lost my temper. I yelled that if she didn't make me kick my boss's wife out, maybe I could. Hannah burst into tears and when we got home locked herself in a room. Canary Fluffy says, You're just as dumb as her for marrying her. Next time, have some balls, and you wouldn't have missed out on a promotion. Blue Green says, Not the a-hole, but you were foolish to marry Hannah in the first place. Think about what the rest of your life is going to be like if you stay with her. If you haven't already, do not have kids with her. I have a theory that the bigger the bridezilla, the shorter the marriage, and the more miserable the husband is. Someone needs to do a study to prove me correct. Carolina Mama says, Everyone sucks here. Your wife for wanting more of a lavish lifestyle knowing you can't afford it. You for blowing up, instead of just talking about that Porsches and new houses aren't in the cards right now. Your boss for not promoting you if you were truly the best man for the job over his wife's feelings. And lastly, his wife for wearing white to a wedding, cause that is catty. But ultimately, you chose to ask your boss and his wife to leave, knowing it would have consequences. I have a 10 year old stepdaughter, Harper. I've been in Harper's life since she was two, and I love this little girl more than anything. My husband and I have Harper Saturday afternoon through Thursday. Her mom picks her up from school on Friday and has her until 12 p.m. Saturday. Harper's mom is a vindictive bee. Harper hates going to her mom's house, and no matter how many times we've tried, we can't get her custody reduced. In March, Harper made a picture frame at school and was asked to bring a family picture. Harper's mom sent in a picture of herself, and we sent in a picture of the three of us. Harper used the one with the three of us, and the frame was sent home on a Friday. Harper's mom was so mad that she didn't use the picture of herself, that she broke the frame in front of Harper. Now, she will make Harper go to her house every Friday, but she won't talk to Harper or touch her. She pretends like she's not there. This destroys Harper. When she gets home, she always finds me and will hold on to me for the rest of the day. She even refuses to eat or speak. She usually speaks or communicates in other ways by Sunday. So if she says she wants something, I get it for her. Whether it's a big Lego set that she's been wanting, a new dress, a mani-pedi, etc. She always gets it. My husband told me to stop spoiling Harper after she spends the night at her mom's house. He said I can sleep in her room or make her a special breakfast or paint her nails at home. But a $100 Lego set, some $20 dresses, going out to eat, and mani petties are too much. Just for reference, our house and cars are completely paid off, and we have a combined yearly income of 560 k We can easily afford it. I think she deserves it after going to her mom's house, but he thinks she's going to end up spoiled and expect this anytime something unpleasant happens. Am I the a-hole for spoiling her after she goes to her mom's house? Aurora J. Vanderbeek says, you know what would help her more than material objects? Therapy and fighting to get her away from her aggressive mother. You're the a-hole. Emerald Athenry says, Everyone sucks here, but it should really be stronger because all of you adults are a-holes. None of this is okay. Harper's mom sounds awful, and this is stuff you need to be documenting with your attorney and taking to court. She cannot ignore her child over an offense like this. That is so damaging to Harper from teaching her how adults respond, to having hurt feelings and the damage it's doing to her now, to have her own mother ignore her. You're not doing any better than Harper's mom. You just think you are because the things you're doing are nice. But, um, hello. Harper's silence isn't a normal reaction to coming back home. You're showing her that love and affection are linked to gifts and experiences, and that's not a healthy thing either. Your husband is right. There would be nothing wrong with having something special for Harper to look forward to upon coming home. But that should be consistent and nice, not a week-to-week -week wish fulfillment to the point of being over the top. Harper's mom is failing her most obviously, but you and her father are just as bad, trying to band-aid her problems with toys and nail dates rather than working with the court system to better her life. If you've got money to burn, give Harper something of substance and lasting meaning rather than a ducking Lego kit. Top Ad 5114 says, I appreciate you wanting to make your stepdaughter feel important. However, giving her everything she wants is the absolute wrong way to go. You're setting yourself up to have a spoiled monster living in your house. 
The fact that you can afford to spoil her this way is irrelevant. Give her lots of hugs, spend time with her, of course, but don't jump every time she says she wants something. Your husband is right. There are other ways to show her she is loved without creating a monster. You're the a-hole.